Ah, uh, virtual reality, an endless world of creativity and code, truly the future of technology. <laughs> What'd you think of that one? What'd you think of that? <laughs> <laughs> straight out of the uh, straight out of bikini bottom oh hell yeah hello everybody welcome to the bubbleography podcast i'm your host kane caputo and i'm here with my co-host mason thompson yeah dude ah today's topic of the day um we're going to be talking about virtual reality it's gonna be hmm. it's a very interesting topic you mean like that stuff where you can just put a pair of goggles on and pretend like you're in like World of Warcraft or something? Um, yeah, that's part of it actually. But there's like a lot more to it than like just like the, the headset. There's like um, so yeah, much. Yeah, you more. can watch movies too. Oh yeah, movies, of course. Yeah. You ever yeah, just yeah, you ever right. just watch like snakes on a plane with your VR headset? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. I'm tired of these mother-loving snakes on my mother-loving VR headset. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so basically, how much do you know about virtual reality so far? Like, like, what do you know of it? Because I, I, I've done my research for it. Honestly, if I'm if I'm just talking about virtual reality, most of the things that I know is that, like, you know, the ones where you just play games on it and it's like, you know whatever connected play any game you want uh throwing your hands around accidentally punching walls almost breaking fingers you know all that stuff and uh hooking up your phone to a certain headset and watching a movie in virtual reality don't do that with a horror movie you'll uh uh don't do that um yeah that's basically all i know really all right all right i've done my research for it so like um so, like, basically what virtual reality is, is basically, like, a computer-generated simulation of, like, of a three-dimensional image or environment that could be, like, interacted with, or, like, it, it could seem real, you know? Like, you could, like, th there might be an apple there, but, like, there's not really an apple there, you know? Yeah, 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 obviously. That's the general basics of it, yeah. Um, when do you think, like, the first virtual, like, reality headset like when did that first come out i i don't know but if i had to guess it wouldn't be in like the early 2000s it would have to be in like you know 2010s something like that really yeah because did you know they were actually playing with virtual reality stuff like as early as the late 90s oh what oh yeah this this stuff goes like way back like oh my ow the first thing that they may have like like the first like the first like common thing like people have known about was um it was like this Nintendo headset. Um what was it called? Oh yeah, yeah, the virtual boy. The oh, virtual yeah. boy. Yeah, virtual boy. I forgot about that. That does count. I forgot. <laughs> that was like made around the late nineties or so. You just like put it yeah. on your head and you just play like these little like um these little like quick little Mario games and stuff. With like a controller yeah, yeah, in your head. <laughs> Yeah, you, know, you couldn't play it for too long. You had to, like, limit yourself for, like, 30 minutes, and Nintendo had to put that out because it would, like... I think it was infrared lights and stuff would actually cause your eyes to actually, like, either make you go blind or cause cancer or something. I can't remember. Cause cancer, but yeah, that was, like, probably... Well, Wait. it's infrared lights. If it, it, like, it... Whenever you looked into the Virtual Boy... It was a bunch of red. It, it was a bunch of red. There, it was red and black. There was nothing. Jesus, what is going on in my office? <laughs> um, it, it was just a bunch of red lights, and that messes with the human eyes. It, we're used to more blue tones and stuff like that. Don't call me an expert. I don't know that fully, but I'm guessing that's what it was. Seeing that Nintendo had to do something about it, you know. So, I, I know I know you know this, but like the listeners don't know this. But like a few days ago, um, one of our friends had a virtual like reality headset. He played with it for like a really long time. Eventually, he got like he popped a few blood vessels. Well, yes, 
Uh-huh. Do you but think yeah, that kind of do you think that kind of same thing would have happened with the Virtual Boy back in the nineties? Well, yeah, it probably happened with that, but like a little bit worse. <laughs> Not just bursted blood vessels, but probably cancer. <laughs> yeah, that. But, the minute you said cancer, I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> hold on a sec. A little head yeah, second. I that. can't. I can't remember off the top of my head. All I know is that the light to use did not mix well with your eyes. But I yeah, bet. with virtual reality now, those busted blood vessels or you know, like Probably. eye irritation or anything, it's much. It is much better now than it was back then with the virtual boy. Yeah, and that's probably like the worst that's gonna happen. Like just like pop yeah. a couple blood vessels. It's still not good. It's still not good, but it's it's progress. Progress, progress. That's all, right. all that matters. All right. So, so you, you you know that like one thing like what's the one thing you think of when you hear when you hear virtual reality? Video games. Video games. Yeah. So, punching walls, punching yeah. walls, video games, all that. But fun fact, like virtual reality is like not only used for like video games. Like there is like other uses for it in like business and health and like all this other stuff. Now, well, like I mean, I sort of figured, but like the prominence is video games to me in my mind. Prominence is the main video games. I I I did think that same way when I was researching for this podcast, and then I read a few articles. How they like they use it in business practices and medical research, and I'm like, holy crap! Like I did not like think about it like that until just now. The bit, the biggest thing is, other than video games, yeah, probably medical research because I can see that, but not like I don't think it's going to be bigger than video games anytime soon. Of course, we'll get to the uh, medical health topic a little later, but right now I want to take a brief little detour to see how it is in the business industry. Mm. Yeah, so, that, that confuses me. How would it be there? So, when you use, like, so, like, um, hmm, I'm trying to figure out how to word this. Um, so let's say you want to, like, you're part of, like, a head, you're, like, the head big cheese of, like, some sort of, like, big business corporation, and you, you have, like, multiple buildings, but, like, you want to build another one in, let's say, like, a... Yes, uh, yes, I am Jeffrey Bezos. Yes, pick pick a state. Pick a state. Uh, let's say um, Arkansas. Arkansas. All right. Um, you wanna you wanna have a location in Arkansas. Um, mm-hmm. but you wanna like you don't know like you want your building to be different than like all the other like high skyline towers skyscrapers you have in like other cities like Charlotte and New Jersey and. Oh no! You know what? I know where you're going with this. So. Go ahead. Go ahead and continue for all the viewers at home, but you mean the I know where you're going with this. Hmm? Yeah, you have a new location. You want it to be different. Um, you hire engineers to basically make you like a blueprint, a blueprint of like the building and how it will behave in the environment. Um, a most, draft, you mean? A draft, yeah, a draft or so. And most people, like, usually they'd get like, just like that... Um, how TV shows have that little like blue sheet of paper and have like the models of the building and stuff. Like Fun a little... fact, they don't actually use those anymore. But go ahead. Not anymore. Some engineers can use virtual reality and just like program a simulation of like the building and how like it will behave in the environment. Like it's like really it's really cool. Like you put on the yeah. goggles, you'll you like you'll see the building. Right there, you'll see, like you'll see like how the wind will impact it, or like how the people around like what will happen if someone like interfered with it. But yep. yeah, that model uh, stuff—it's really cool, I really really cool. Dabbled in, I dabbled in uh, generation and um, making of models like that a little bit myself. But I think you told me about that. Weren't you like in a high school class with it? Yeah, I went through three classes of drafting in high school, but. You know, so so you get so you kind of get what I'm saying here, right? I, I, yeah, 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 I get what you're saying. I just I just didn't you know put that together with business before, but yes, I I can see how that works now. I w- I will tell you when I was like researching this topic, when I like when I like figured out when I read the article about it, 
I'm like, wow. I'm like, well, that that's the future right there. Like, holy crap. I like did not expect it to be like that, you know? It's not even really the future. It's it's happening right now. Like, you know, um, I guess I don't know if this actually counts as virtual reality, but like, um, uh, take a little, we're going to go back to the video game topic a little bit, right? Um, okay. I don't know if this actually counts as virtual reality, but you know, like face scanning for um, putting a, a, a models in a video game. Like the uh, like the like the green suit with like the white dots in it and like on it and stuff. No, 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 no. That's that's motion capture. But um, I'm talking about like take uh, you take a Madden game for example. They take players from the NFL and they sc- and they screen or they uh, capture their face and they put them on their player models. Oh, that's, so- that's sort of thing like virtual reality because that- they're taking something from reality and putting it into a game. But I guess that doesn't really matter right now. I'm just saying. But you're, you're saying they like, so, so like, instead of like programming things based off, did they like actually like, like get a, each and every athlete, to like get their picture or like scan their so, face or something? Yeah, they get most of them. Uh, like people from people that are like practice squad, probably not, but they get, they get most of the people. Interesting, interesting. So, the next topic of virtual reality base. It's like, and not not only do they have business, but they also have health. And this one I have a little more information on. Mm -hmm. So, you may be like, what do you think virtual reality is used for, like, health-wise? Uh, probably... (laughs) If I had to take a guess and, you know, uh, line it up with something, it's probably something like Surgeon Simulator. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, for, for, the- for everyone at home, that's a uh, VR game where you're a doctor and you, uh, <laughs> you, you brutally take people apart and put them back together. Uh, extreme <laughs> surgery. Yes. But, um... Uh, actually, you're, I, I don't want to be rude, but, like, you're very far off from that. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I kind of figured. <laughs> it was actually more views, like, I, I may have, like, put the topic up as, like, health, but it's actually more of, like, mental health. In the sense that, um, uh, back, like, during the early 2000s or so, there was an experiment to test, like, a group of people if, um, like, see if they have, like, PTSD or any anxiety disorders. So they uh... would, um... Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, they would put on the virtual reality, like they they like do on pull on the headsets and put them through like simulations that like that were like that would trigger like behaviors of PTSD and um any anxiety disorders. Though there yeah. was there was a flaw in their little thing here. <laughs> they all forgot about motion sickness. So like mm. the. It wasn't a very like good experiment because a lot of people got motion sick, but in the end they did get a few results. They did get a few people with PTSD. So I mean, like, hey, they got something out of it, you know? Sorry, what? No, I'm saying like people have got like motion sick. Like a lot of people got motion sick from that experiment, and um. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like you know. I didn't think that would be a surprise. People get motion sick from just, like, watching TV sometimes or playing video games. That happens a lot. Well, at the time, virtual reality was still new, so they didn't really know, like, if it would cause motion sickness or not. They The experiment was mainly based off of um, finding mental disorders. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. But... It's, yeah, it's already pretty bad just sitting in a chair looking at a screen and just to put it, put a screen closer to your face and have you experience the motions in a game or in anything really is, are, is, is already going to be like 10 times worse for motion sickness. Oh yeah. And yeah, I didn't know they used virtual reality to find, um, mental illnesses that that's uh that's actually kind of interesting it's very clever but like i i've thought about it like earlier today 
And I'm like, wait, this could be used for like a method of like torture and stuff. Like you could put someone <laughs> like what if someone was like really bad with like PTSD, like really, really bad PTSD. You just put them in a headset, put them in that environment like they'd be freaking out. They'd be like in such a panic. Yeah, that that would be really bad. It's, it's, it's a horrible thought to think about. Like they, they got to be careful with that kind of stuff. Yeah, like they numb your face so you don't feel they don't feel the headset on you, and then you just and you're just in a war zone. If if they made a Call of Duty game on the VR headset, I would not. I would not want to play that if I had PTSD. I think I might, I think I might die, like in real life. Oh yeah, yeah. You have um. Uh, for the audio listeners who don't really know that well, Mason has a little bit of uh, epilepsy. Yep. So I, mean, I don't yeah, know if like I may trying to play Beat Saber, <laughs> and yet you try and play Beat Saber. Hey, listen, it's fun, okay? Worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, all right. So, final topic, final group of like where virtual reality belongs, and I, I know you've been like leaking this out on this on these other topics, but we're finally gonna discuss the virtual reality in video games. Heck it yeah! Like the big, the big boy, the the real, the big Kahuna. The big kahuna. <laughs> so virtual reality in video games, crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> it is probably like the one thing that got me like attracted to like the idea of virtual reality, because it just it, the first thing anyone thinks of, really. Yeah, it is like when you see virtual reality, you'll think of like video games and stuff like it was during like it was at the time when the first like oculus like rift i think the headset came out and i'm like wait this is like this is crazy like this is really like virtual reality this is like the stuff i see on tv but except now it's real yeah right it's like you know it's like the simpsons predicting something right it just actually happens when they predict it <laughs> Yes, but some of that stuff could be bad. Virtual reality is mostly good. Except in our friend's case. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So, um, have you played any, like, VR games recently? Yes, I have. Biggest one would be Super Hot. Super Hot, yes, I've played that too. It's like, what they do is, like, like the, the VR, like, headset. Like, it knows when you're, like, moving and stuff. And when you move, like the like everything else will move with you. But if you stop moving, everything else stops, and you're also like just a badass, just like killing people and stuff, like the basic shooter games. Yeah, it's and also like for all of you listening at home, that's what I was talking about when I talked when I said that uh, punching walls will happen. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, it right. all came from that game because. Some things that you have to pull off, you actually have to punch the enemies in the game. And you better not be in a small, in a small and enclosed space because you will either, one, punch through a wall, or two, break your hand. <laughs> Try. A con <laughs> consequences with having the VR headset is that you may see the virtual world, but you can't see the real world. So you will have no idea where you are. <laughs> yeah, this, this isn't Ready Player One. You're like, actually, you're, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't think they saw where they were in Ready Player One either. Yeah, but they got to sit down and it still... Oh, yeah. They got locked in place and still felt the experience, you know? Yeah, they stood still and they kept moving around in the virtual world. Yep. So, actually, um, I'm going to... come. I got a little... I'm going to pull up a little uh, sneaky on you. <laughs> I'm going to... Um, I have actually was able to speak to a um, person who is able to program virtual reality games. And he's currently, oh, really? he's currently working on a project right now. As a matter of fact, it's, um, it's a little, it's a little top secret though. Like even I don't know about it, but I bet like eventually given like a year or so, we'll probably get like a trailer for it or something. Mm. Been waiting for some sort of trailer myself, but I don't know if I'm going to get it even this year, but that's for a different story. Go ahead. All right. So, his name is Rex, and he was recommended to me by my friend in um in my writing class. Uh, I talked to him. 
I asked him if I wanted an interview. He said, yeah, gave me a few, um, gave me a few answers. I gave him a few questions actually the other way around, but, um, yeah, yeah I'm going to pull, I'm going to play the clip right now. Are you ready? Yep. All right. Uh, say something. Let me know you're here. Hola. All right. Uh, I'm going to ask you five questions, uh, and then we'll be good here. Is that all right? Yeah, shoot, man. All righty. So, um, what do you know about virtual reality? Uh, nowadays, it's very popular, like when it comes to the future technology. And I mostly know how to code and program things into a VR game myself. I've done a lot of research and taken some computer science classes, so I think I have a pretty good hand on it. All right. What do you think of how far virtual reality has gone? I mean, back in the day, it used to be shit like the Virtual Boy from Nintendo, where you just look at a screen that's basically close to your face. But now you can actually program hands in the game and grab and hold on to things. And we've been able to program so that just behaves like real life objects, you know? So it's come a long way. It does much more like lifelike. How do you make uh, the simulations that we can interact with in the virtual reality world? Modeling and coding, strings of code. So if you want to make something like an Apple, per se, in the VR world, you'll have to create the model first, and then like you want it to look like something, you're going to have to use strings of code to get the color right, to get the shape right, all of it. Have it fall, make it edible for a player. All that requires its own like set of coding. All right. Where do you see virtual reality in the next, uh, let's say, 50, 30, just like just a just couple more decades? It's going to be even more advanced than it is now. I think with better tech, it's not only just going to be able to program hands, but like legs, torso, arms, the whole body eventually. I think soon you're going to get like the full virtual experience. It's going to feel like you're like actually there. Uh, after you finish your uh, current project, do you plan to keep working with virtual reality in the future, like for future yeah. projects? Yeah, of course. I've definitely enjoyed it. I've had a great time getting to work with VR, and I definitely want to do that a lot more in the future. Interesting. Thank you for your time. No problem. What'd you think of that? Interesting. Honestly, very interesting. All right. Um, I think we're just about to actually wrap up the uh, first episode here. Do you have anything else to say about virtual reality before we um, wrap it up here? Not really. I mean, you know, I'm hopeful for the future. Like, you know, the the 3D space is very interesting, you know. Like, when video games first started, they started off in, like, two-dimensional spaces. Yeah, very yeah. rarely would you see actual 3D. It might have seemed, like, pseudo-3D, but, like... Like, like those super... Reality, like the Mario platformers. Like Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, like, the pseudo-3D 3D would be, like, you know, the Star Wars video games, some of them, you know. Like the spaceship but, simulator battles things. Like yes, that. yes. And then, you know, we made a jump to 3D with the video games, and now they're in, uh, they're in virtual reality. But I'm hopeful in the future that there can be affordable virtual reality things at home that are four-dimensional where you can like feel everything you know oh yeah you can, you can actually feel smell uh taste anything you know what i mean uh, you know, video games used to be like in front of you but now they'll be like all around you maybe maybe we can even travel into the game ourselves with it but that might be a little far away the 4d <laughs> I, could, I could see but <laughs> you know I, I heard you say like taste like what you want to taste in the video game that's Sounds like interesting, but also very disgusting. Yeah, but you know, I'm I'm, th I'm saying like you know, maybe you're in a game and you have you see food. You're in, you're like in a virtual reality RPG, right? And you see food that looks really delicious. What if you could just eat it? <laughs> I'm, I'm, pic I mean? I'm picturing like you're playing like Call of Duty and you're son and you're like having a conversation <laughs> with like your military general. He's like he puts you down just, his cough. You just you just frag grenade. No, no, I'm, I'm thinking more of, like, he, like, sips his coffee, puts it down, walks away. You could just, like, sneak behind him and drink his coffee. <laughs> yeah, that'd be really funny. But that's the only thing I really have to say about it, to be honest. All right, all right. I'm for the future. Me, me too, man. Thank you so much for listening to our uh, first episode of the Bubbleography podcast. Um, we'll uh, hope you bubbles pop around later. Uh, that is not our stable outro, but we'll think of another one as it goes. We all have a good night.